Anyone from any background can find themselves stuck in addictive loops that can become very destructive and life deranging. And this includes medical staff, like your nurses and doctors. And I can attest to that because I am one of those nurses. And today I wanna to talk about my story uh, surrounding addiction and my nursing career. But before we get started, if you're new here, I'm Brian, a once ICU RN turned full-time heroin and meth addict, arrested for selling drugs and currently serving out a three to 10 year prison sentence now on house arrest. This channel is just a way for me to share with you what I'm learning about how to find meaning and balance. And I'm applying the lessons that I'm learning to my own life in real time here on the channel for you. So welcome. This is a tough thing to talk about. I don't really want to make this video, to be honest with you. I've been dreading it all week once I came up with the idea popped in my head that I needed to talk about this and needed to share this with with the with my YouTube people. There's so much shame around it and so much uh, you know just self-loathing regarding this. I've spoken in the past about how I don't really have any real remorse for the things that I was arrested for and the things that I'm serving out a sentence for. Um, but those things don't have anything to do with my nursing career. I had already stopped nursing when I got in trouble with the law. I just didn't want to get those two things confused because I do have remorse for and just a lot of shame for the way I handled my responsibilities as, as a professional, you know, medical professional. All right, so where to begin? I had pretty well-developed addictive tendencies prior to ever starting to go into nursing in the first place. Um, like I've talked about before, when I started trying drugs in high school, I immediately liked them. I was immediately drawn to them more some than others. Uh, and as many people know, when it comes to addiction, uh, we people who are susceptible to hardcore substance abuse or any kind of other uh, behavioral addictions as well, we tend to be, the, the addiction itself isn't the problem, it's a symptom of the problem. So I was kind of self-medicating for my own psychological problems from a pretty young age. Um, I wasn't full-blown chemically dependent on anything until uh, quite a few years after high school. Um, I, I took a liking to opiates pretty early on. Uh, when I tried them and I would just take them whenever I could get a hold of them and I ended up discovering Kratom. For those of you who don't know what Kratom is, it's a uh, plant that comes from Southeast Asia. It's legal in the United States. You could buy it at any head shop and it functions basically as an opiate. So as soon as I discovered this, uh, I think from the day that I discovered it, I started taking it regularly all the time and I was continuously addicted to it. It very quickly became my you know, mainstay foundational drug of choice. Um, obviously I preferred other opiates more, but this one was always available and legal. And so I was able to be a functioning addict on that for years, including when I started taking prerequisites for nursing school. I decided to become a nurse. Probably not the smartest idea considering I had an opiate uh, addiction already. Um, but you know, we, we don't we don't see these things as as people who are suffering from these afflictions, right? We we don't admit to ourselves what's really going on. I started taking classes. Um, I was I've never been a super you know study happy person. I've never been really into school. Uh, but uh, so as I started taking classes. I felt that I wanted something more to be able to study. I had tried Adderall in the past when I was taking college classes before and I loved it. And so I immediately started uh, to look for a prescription, somebody to prescribe me Adderall. I found it easily. I went into the doctor, you know, acting like I just had ADD and da 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 da. I mean, I really did have these symptoms, but I just, I, I went there wanting Adderall. I wanted an Adderall prescription. So I got prescribed Adderall. So I was taking Adderall and Kratom throughout all my prereqs and one and when I got into nursing school and going through nursing school I wasn't taking the Adderall as prescribed either just an FYI you know just addictive tendencies I, I wanted to I would take more than I was supposed to and I'd run out early and then be waiting for my next refill 
So full on uh, addictive mess already before I even started nursing, right? So I get through nursing school and I get my license and I get hired into a trauma ICU unit, get trained as a new nurse there, and then I'm on my own as a, an ICU nurse. I spent the first two years working at the unit that I was hired on and then became a travel nurse uh, where I would do contracts in different locations, like three to six months at a time. Over this period of time, where my addiction escalated wasn't actually because of access to meds, as you might expect. It was really more that I had access to IV equipment. Uh, using needles isn't something I probably would have ever done on my own, but since I had become comfortable with it as a nurse, uh, starting IVs on patients, understanding how they worked, knowing how to do it properly and professionally and safely, I uh, wasn't afraid to put needles in myself at that point and like start IVs on myself at that point. And it was really easy to have access to kind of all the IV supplies and needle supplies I wanted as a nurse. That's really the supply that uh, that I that I took from the hospital is I would take extra needles home. Now, with regard to access to meds, I did take meds from hospitals when I could, but there are a lot of checks in place to prevent uh, people from stealing, uh, staff, nurses, whatever, doctors, from stealing medications, particularly medications that are have potential for abuse, right? So my access to those were pretty limited. I would get away with it when I could. You know, I'm so not proud of this, obviously. I'm so ashamed of this. This is like the most shameful shit ever uh, to be doing this. Uh, yes, I would take meds when I could, but there are so many checks in place that the, the access to it, if I wanted to get as much as I wanted, it would become very apparent very quickly that I was taking meds, you know, because of all the checks in place. I won't go into all that right now, but there's just ways that it will alert people that there's something wrong, basically. So the little bits that I could get away with here and there, uh, I would take, but I, you know, quickly, my appetite for th those types of things was far greater than those little ways that I could get away with it. And I wasn't willing to put myself on the radar for that because I knew that I could just go find drugs elsewhere, right? I, I, I felt always like it was safer for me to, safer for me, <laughs> it was safer for my image, I guess you could say, to go find drugs elsewhere. <sighs> okay, how this all came to an end was a couple of different things. One was that I was applying for a new uh, nursing job and I ended up having to do a hair test and the hair test was positive and so I thought, oh, I'm just not going to get that job. Uh, but they reported me to the Board of Nursing, which they totally should have. Uh, and at the time I was so offended and, and just completely, just completely in denial of, of you know, how severe my problem was. And I was all offended and, and, and stuff, and, but they obviously absolutely should have done that and reported me to the Board of Nursing. The Board of Nursing said, hey, we can either investigate this or you can come to our rehab program and, uh, and do our rehab program and then we'll forget all about it. Again, like I said, I was in denial and I was like offended and I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. I got a different nursing job. But during that nursing assignment, it was a three month assignment, about halfway through, my friends and family confronted me and said, hey, you need to go to rehab. And I ended up going to a different rehab unrelated to the nurse, Board of Nursing's rehab. Completed the three month rehab, was off of drugs when I got out. The Board of Nursing thing was still under investigation because I hadn't gone to their rehab. Uh, and they weren't like recognizing the rehab that I had ended up going to as as the same thing. They needed me to go to theirs to drop the investigation. And so I was still, you know, trying to figure out what to do about that. And the rehab that I just went to, though, needed a nurse. 
uh, and I still had my license at this time. They hadn't taken it away. So I ended up getting hired as the nurse at the rehab facility that I had gone to. Worked there for a couple of months and ended up relapsing. I think it was about six months total from when I went to the rehab to when I relapsed. And at that point, I just didn't really care anymore. I was getting divorced and I was giving the house to my ex and and all of the things to my ex and all I wanted to do was like get this camper van that I ended up buying and that's like the only thing I had and I just got that and I just stopped nursing and I quit my job at the at the rehab I just ended up in this camper van um doing heroin and uh and meth all the time and I did that for about a year uh and then started selling drugs at that point to to support my habit um, and basically just selling uh, I found like the best source that I could find uh, and then I would just sell that to the people around me uh, for as cheap as I could to just so that I could keep supporting my habit and living and buying more and that's like all I was doing uh, for about a year just in this complete drug mess and uh, I ended up getting uh, arrested with a bunch of heroin on me and a bunch of meth on me and I ended up with a controlled buy and that's a whole another story and that's where I've been ever since is incarcerated uh, county jail prison or now on house arrest and I'm just polishing off the rest of my sentence right now I have six more months on the ankle monitor before uh, it's been three years and then I'm up for uh, to see if I can get the ankle monitor off and just have another a little while on parole that's looking like what's going to be the case so that's the situation I'm in now but I'm kind of digressing now from the nursing story I just kind of wanted to give you guys a picture of, of the the events that transpired over the last few years of my life uh, before I you know ended up in the situation that I'm in now so that's about it obviously I have uh, you know, regret around everything that I did regarding my profession. I'm not planning on going back into nursing. I'm not. Uh, I'm not tr hoping to get my license back. I, I think it's possible. I think it's. I've looked into it, and I've definitely. It's definitely possible that uh, I can have done what I did and be in a situation that I'm in now and still make the appropriate steps to get my nursing license back. But I, I have no interest in doing that. That's not the direction I want my life to go in at this point anyway. So uh, don't worry if you guys are watching this and just horrified and uh, thinking that, uh, you know, don't worry, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be a nurse anymore, okay? So, so you don't have to worry about me. Anyway, that's about it. I just wanted to share that. Um, I just felt I needed to share that. And I hope that that was just helpful for somebody else to hear. Maybe if you're going through it and you're just feeling like you know there's no hope and it's a horrible situation that you're in whatever it is like I've just been through all this crazy stuff and including prison and uh, come from being you know a nurse and come from ha you know ha having all of the things that everybody wants in this life and uh, and just you know was miserable the whole time and now I'm on the other side of this addiction thing and even though I'm still arrested even though I'm still incarcerated technically uh, and have been ever since I've been sober it's been the best time of my life it's this this, this period of sobriety has just you know I, I, something's clicked and and I'm, I'm having a better time than I've ever had before so I, I just want this to serve as a message of like you know if you're going through it or if you know people that are going through it it's possible to get no matter how bad it is to a better place like a way better place and it's actually possible to come out the other side of that and and experience life in a way that's far superior than you've ever experienced it before uh, because you because of the lessons that you you have the capacity to learn as as someone who's gone through serious addiction like that thank you guys so much for listening to that and letting me share that with you i really appreciate it oh yeah real quick the song of the week is go figure by kyle kirchable link in the description check it out i'll see you guys next week